Hi, this is Rich Carlson. Welcome to another episode of The Art of Rope Work here at Kenyons and Crags. I'm excited to share with you a cool piece of gear with a myriad of uses for rope work, the VT Prusik. So grab your gear and a rope and follow along. In today's video, we're going to talk about the VT Prusik. The VT Prusik is a special made product designed by yours truly, manufactured by Blue Water Ropes, that's available in both uh, black and tan. The VT is uh, made with a Technora sheath, which is a melt resistant fiber. It doesn't melt, it starts to char at about 950 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's got a Technoric uh, sheath and a nylon core. The strength, eye to eye, is about 4,400 pounds, which works out to about 20 kilonewtons. When we fold it over in a basket configuration like this, it's got a strength of about 6,500 pounds, which works out to about 29.5 kilonewtons. Because it's an eye to eye prusik instead of a loop, there's quite a few unique kinds of hitches that we can tie with it. But first, an explanation of how prusiks work. Uh, prusiks and basically all of our friction hitches work a lot like Chinese finger traps. We played around with these when we were kids. You put your fingers in them, they stretch out and bind down on your fingers. You compress them and they open up. So with a friction hitch, when I install it on the rope, when it stretches out, it tightens up and holds on the rope. When it compresses, it opens up and I can move it. So one of the challenges with a normal uh, prusik loop is most of what I do on the rope ends up having to be symmetrical. So if you take the standard three wrap prusik, for example, we all know that it's going to bind up nice and secure for us when we tie it. But if you've ever ascended with a prusik, you know that it's got some kind of nuisance qualities to it. It holds nice and tight, but it binds up. And when I'm ready to move it to climb up higher on the rope, it can be a bear to move up. So with the VT, because it is an eye-to-eye prusik, I don't have to tie symmetric prusiks. I can tie asymmetric prusiks. So one common one is a three over one prusik. So what I'm doing is just wrapping one time around the bottom strand. The upper strand, I'm gonna wrap three times. Now when I cinch it down, I have the same three wraps on top that are gonna to stretch out and give me the holding power that I want. But when I go to move it up, it slides up a lot more easily. So that's one of the hitches we can tie. Another one is called the Valdetan Tress. And that's where the VT and VT Prusik came from. The Valdetan Tress starts with three spiral wraps. After those three spiral wraps that I make nice and snug, I'm gonna even up the ends and start making crisscrosses. So all I'm gonna do is bring this one across, that one across in the back. I'll come across in the front, across in the back, across in the front, and I keep wrapping until I run out of material. Once I'm out of material, I clip in with a carabiner. It bites just like a prusik would. But this has kind of a unique quality to it in that even when it's fully loaded, I can reach up to the top, compress it, and I can get it to move. That works nicely for things like self belays, passing knots on rappel, setting up a load releasing hitch and so on. There are quite a few other hitches that we could tie with our VT Prusik. There are climb highs, there are Bachmans, so on and so on. But really, if we know these two, we have something that we can use in just about any situation. The way I kind of look at it is when I do the asymmetric Prusik, that works best for up operations. That's what I use for ascending. That's what I use as part of a progress capture device in a haul system. Anything that involves going up or hauling up, I use an asymmetric prusik. For down operations, like backing myself up on rappel, for setting up a hands-free lower, switching from hauling to lowering, that kind of thing, I prefer the Valdetan Tress. 
So I could use the Valdetan truss for everything, including ascending. But one of the downsides to it is, let's say I can take an 18 inch step. I would push the Valdetan truss up 18 inches. And then when I go to load it, it stretches out a little bit before it holds my weight. So I'll be going up 18 inches, down maybe three. So I'm losing some efficiency. Whereas an asymmetric prusik, I push it up 18 inches and it stays in place. One use that I had not anticipated for the VT Prusik that a lot of users have gravitated towards is using them as lanyards. So in this case, I've set up my, my black VT Prusik full length using a 10 millimeter stainless steel quick link on my harness and a carabiner on one end. On the tan VT Prusik, I've ran it through my tie-in point on my harness set it up as a basket and clip the carabiner into the two eyes. So this lanyard is half length. Another thing users have been doing with their VT Prusiks is setting up emergency quick draws. I could set it up as a full length 33 inch quick draw. In this case, I folded it in half. I could also fold it in thirds or fourths to create a quick draw of any length that I need. Now let's talk about self belaze on rappel what a lot of people refer to as rigging an auto block. When we rig auto blocks, quite often what we're doing is rigging a friction hitch either above or below our repelling device. And there's pros and cons to each. First, if I rig a, a self belay down below my repelling device, it comes with an advantage. That advantage is it's only going to hold my weight that's left over after the friction of the repelling device. So I can wrap with a normal prusik, more common is what's called a French prusik, where you're just wrapping the, the cord around the brake strand. And quite often people will clip that to a leg loop on their harness. The reason they're clipping low is because again, friction hitches work like Chinese finger traps. They need to stretch out to lock down on the rope. If I connect this too close to my repelling device, and it's not allowed to stretch out before it encounters my repelling device, it will mind itself and not do its job. The reason that people have always argued against putting their self belay above the repelling device is if it locks up, it's holding 100% of your body weight. If that's a normal prosic and it holds all of my weight, it can be very difficult to break it to continue repelling. I overcome that problem if I'm using a Valdetan truss. Because again, when it locks up, I can reach up to the top, compress it, and continue my rappel. So the way I'm set up now, I'm set up with a device that I can just clip into the end. This is still within reach, so I can operate my brake hand with my right hand, and I can operate my self-belay with my left hand. If I knew I was going to do something like pass a knot, I wouldn't want to clip into this device because my ultimate goal is going to be to get this device off. In a case like that, I would rather connect this separately with a lanyard to my harness. One thing that is made very simple with the VT Prusik is passing knots. We might have a knot that was used to connect two shorter ropes for a long rappel, or it might have been, say, a butterfly knot that was used to isolate a core shot in the rope. With a VT, if I know I'm going to be passing a knot, I will go ahead and rig it at the top, just like I was doing a self belay. I'll rig my repelling device below that and clip it directly to my harness. For this technique, it's pretty important that I extend my VT as far as I can, but still have it in reach. And you'll see why here in a moment. So what I've done is I've repelled down to just above the knot. I've let the VT take my weight. Once it's taken my weight, I can disconnect from the repelling device. Now I'm supported entirely by the VT Prusik. I'm going to remove my repelling device and reinstall it immediately below the knot that I'm passing. I want it to be right up against that knot and I want my tie off to be nice and secure and tight. Once I've tied off, I can reach up to the top of the VT Prusik and pull down on it gently until I find that sweet spot to give myself just the right speed that I want. And I'm going to lower myself until all of my weight is on the repelling device. 
So here's the reason that I need the extension. If I didn't extend, there's a possibility that when I go to load my rappelling device, things settle, the knots tighten down, and if the VT comes down on top of the knot before I've loaded my rappelling device, I haven't accomplished anything. So in this case, locked off, got my extension, reach up to the top of the VT, pull it down gently. I've loaded my rappelling device. I can now disconnect the VT. Once I've disconnected the VT, I unlock my rappelling device and I'm back on rappel. Ta-da! With some practice, I can use the VT Prusik tight as a Valdetan tress to descend tensioned ropes. <laughs> Why would I want to do that? Well, as an example, somebody rigged on a double strand of rope to rappel. They're on the rope. I need to get down to help them, and I don't have another rope in reserve. You can't get a normal rappelling device onto a tensioned rope. So by tying the VT onto the rope and hanging on it with an extension, I can use this to descend the rope and render aid. Another use of the VT Prasik is for setting up running belays. If I set up a tensioned horizontal safety rope, it's enough for me to just clip around that rope with a carabiner. If there's any kind of an angle to the rope, whether I'm moving up or down, it's advantageous to be able to tie in with the Veldetan truss. If I'm moving up the rope, what I suggest people do is grab the VT from the bottom, push up on it, and compress it as you go. If you slip and the safety rope needs to catch you, your hands will automatically come down with the fall and the VT will lock up. If you're coming down the rope, what I suggest people do is down climb a couple of steps, move their VT. Down climb a couple of steps, move their VT. The reason for that is you don't want to be holding up the top, releasing it, slipping and falling. Your instincts are going to tell you to grab tighter and it won't be able to do its job. The VT also excels as a rope grab in a progress capture device for hauling systems. Unlike skinnier prosthetics that tend to suck up into pulleys, the VT mines itself well even on pulleys that were not meant to be prosthetic mining pulleys. In this case, I've done an asymmetric prosthetic with six uh, wraps on the grabbing end and one at the top just for easy releasability. When I set it up, I've got a three to one mechanical advantage. I lift, it mines itself, and holds the load while I do my resets. The VT has actually become so popular with some rescue teams that they're even using it in place of the normal tandem, uh, tandem prosthetic belay systems. Normal nylon prosthetics are a concern because they may melt through as the rope is traveling through it. But because of the VT's Technora sheath, that's not an issue. Next, I'm going to demonstrate how to use a VT prosthetic tied as a Valdetan truss as a load releasing hitch. It'll come in handy for doing things like passing knots and hauling or lowering systems. Or in my demonstration, I'm going to show you how to convert a static rigging to a lowering system. Once I've rigged, I'm also going to have the advantage of a built-in safety backup using the Veldetan truss. So to transfer the load, what I've set up is a hauling system. In this case, I'm using a Petzl Jag. This could also be an Aztec kit, Purcell Prusik, or any kind of small jigger or mechanical advantage system. So VT Prusik is on the loaded rope, tied as a Veldetan truss. I'm going to slide that down and set it. Lift with my mechanical advantage system. That has taken the load off of my static rigging, which I can now convert to a lower. And for my demonstration, I'm just going to switch it over to a, a Munter hitch. I don't need to change anything else. I can lower the load with the VT Prusik. Once the load is on the Munter, I don't need to take this off 
I'm going to leave it on as a hands-free backup. So when I lower, if something happens to me and my hands come off, it catches the load. One of the questions that comes up a lot about the VT Prusik is it's an eight millimeter piece of material. So a lot of people assume they can only use it on thicker ropes. And that's not true. Because of the design of the VT Prusik, it actually flattens out when you wrap it around the rope. When it flattens out, it creates more surface uh, contact with the host rope. So you can use that eight millimeter Prusik on thicker ropes, 11, 12, whatever, but you can use it all the way down on nine millimeter and even eight millimeter ropes. The only thing you gotta watch for is the number of wraps. So on this one, I've tied a three over one wrap with an asymmetric Prusik. If I'm tying it on a skinnier rope like an eight mil, I might wanna go to four wraps up on the top and one on the bottom. One of the things I get feedback about is when people are using the VT Prusik to tie a Velda 10 tress. Some people will contact me and tell me they have a hard time releasing the VT while they're hanging their weight on it. Others will tell me they tie it, but it doesn't hold as snugly as they want. Where that's coming from is how well you tie the VT Prusik. Some people throw their spirals on and immediately start doing crisscrosses and they clip into it. And then they wonder when they hang on it, why is it not holding? You need to be very purposeful when you do your wraps. So when I do my first wraps, I'm tying them nice and snug and even setting them a little bit. Once I've set them, I make sure my ends are even and I try to come up with a pattern when I'm doing my wraps. And it doesn't matter if you go left over right or right over left. Just try to make some kind of a pattern so you're getting even crisscrosses. And I'm gonna wrap them all nice and tight and close together. And I wanna actually have to work a little bit to get this last wrap around before I clip it with a carabiner. If I do that, when I pull on it, it's gonna stretch out and lock up just like those Chinese finger traps. If I'm using it on a skinnier rope and I find that it's not holding down as tight as I want it to, go ahead and try adding a fourth wrap up on the top. If you're a smaller person and you're doing three wraps and you're finding it a little hard to release, try dropping down to two. Try with your weight, the ropes that you're using, and practice in a safe environment, a low angled slab until you get it right. So I'm gonna show you two different ways that I can tie an asymmetric Prusik. The simplest way for a lot of people is to start with a simple girth hitch. We could also call that a one over one Prusik. The next thing I wanna do is decide where I want the, the holding power to be. If my holding power is gonna be down, I want the uh, greater number of spirals to be on top. If I'm gonna be lifting up, I want the greater number of spirals to be on the bottom. But let's say I'm using this for ascending a rope. I've got one on the bottom, and I wanna make two more on the top. It's just a simple matter of passing more wraps through, evening up the ends, and then setting the pressic. Depending on your weight and the diameter of the rope, you might want to use the three wraps, that works for me. You might want to add a fourth wrap on a skinnier rope. Another way we can tie the asymmetric Prusik is by stitching it. When I do that, what I like to do is start wrapping in the direction that I need the holding power. In this case, I'm going to use it for ascending, so I'm going to wrap up with the longer of the two strands. And I want three wraps, which I've got. Now I'm gonna take the upper piece and come over the, over the top of this one to create that bridge that you see in Prusix. And then this end is gonna come through into that space so these two pieces come out together. When I do that, the asymmetric Prusik that I'm tying is also known as a Schwabish. There's another variation of an asymmetric Prusik though, and the only difference is, instead of this last piece coming around this direction, it comes around this direction and finishes here. 
when you set it and look at the bottom, it looks like a lot like a clove hitch. Both of them work fine. Some people have, have a preference for one over the other. And there's some applications where one actually works a little better than the other. Just practice both and see which one you like. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you think it will benefit others, please share it on your favorite social media. The best way to keep this old man motivated to produce more videos like this one, while I still can, will be to subscribe to my channel. Thanks.